David William Turner. This is the William Turner Gallery. We're here today to speak with Joseph Nekbatol about his current show at the gallery, Terra Incognita. Tell us a little about your early development as an artist. What brought you to this current stage of your works? Yes, it began in my uh, college years. I was going to the Southern Illinois University in Carbondale, very interesting school with design and great art department, but I was involved more in the anthropology, sociology department, the psychology, politics, poli-sci. I thought I was probably going to become a sociologist, possibly a lawyer. And then I had a kind of a crisis uh, two years into my studies, and I determined that it was more effective and felt better for me to address social issues sort of on the cultural level, on the artistic level, using things like beauty and other ways in, rather than you know, sort of data-driven, top-down analysis of our social problems and how to correct them. So that sort of led me to my commitment to being an artist. My father was a photographer, so I had been around image makers, and I had always an interest in it, but that led to my real commitment. And from there, I went to some graduate school, Columbia and Cornell, and it led me to New York City where I began very, you know, my early career very active in trying to bring politics into also a complex abstract based art. Because I, I did think it was important to not leave our social political reality out of art and escape into some kind of pure abstraction, but rather make the two, to bring the two together kind of a imaginative and visionary world. So uh, I started working on the idea of ideology. I uh, took that as my subject, and I tried to problematize the ideology by taking images from the mass media and superimposing them, almost like a pampa fest. Uh, so you have this whole panoply of the images from which to draw and draw conclusions from. And that led me in 86 to working with computers because uh, computers were beginning at that time to take on the dominant role of controlling information of the military, of course, and just sort of the reality that we're now very accustomed to. But it seemed to me a very important social issue which I could not ignore. So I got involved with using computers and computer robotics to create uh, paintings uh, at that time. 86, and then in 91, I got finally inside the programming part of the computer as part of an artisan residency at uh, a little town called Abois, which is in France, uh, the home of Louis Pasteur. And this was now a reflection, of course, on him and his work, uh, but also in my personal life, I had issues around AIDS, and AIDS was very much an important part of what was happening socially. And so I wanted to sort of make an art that would be analogous to these problems and sort of visualize some of these problems. So um, that was my beginning with um, the viral project. And from there, uh, I took it into artificial life in 1999 uh, in collaboration with Stefan Sakara, uh, my programmer, and we wanted to visualize the actual development of the virus into the host image, and um, that's what we have in the show today. Tell us a little about the processes and themes behind this show, Terra Incognito. Sure. Um, what I'm trying to do is bridge like the electronic activity with traditional painting. Um, I hope to make a kind of combination of both of these cultures because, I mean, the speed of the image today is both a blessing and also a kind of problem, and the reflexivity of painting is both a gift and also a problem, so I'm trying to bring these two worlds together in this show. Um, I have a lot of material here that deals with both the virus, but also um, what happened in Abu Ghraib, that's kind of the focus of this triptych behind me, for example the abuses that were perpetrated under our name, unfortunately. And I'm trying to set up kind of a psychic uh, cleansing of this occurrence through this triptych. 
if you notice the middle panel is a kind of blue, almost toilet water uh, passageway to kind of cleanse our psyche. And the outer two panels, we have a prisoner being tortured by the Americans. Uh, he's parading in with his arms outstretched, which of course evokes uh, the crucifixion and sort of brings another spiritual uh, reference to the piece. But it's also, as you can see, all of my work has something to do with sublimation, so it has to do with repressed idea, uh, emotions, ideas, memories, and bringing them to the surface and back and forth. Um, and that's why the other aspect of the painting in the show, the shadow world, has to do with sort of emerging out of this, what Dick Cheney called the shadow world that we had to function in, in, in this context of post 9-11. And I think that we need to emerge from this shadow world. And I hope this, these paintings address that issue. How do you see your work progressing in the future? Well, I've been working more on sound. I've done this viral symphony, and I've been trying to develop the artificial life aspect into new venues, new possibilities, because it's just an endless exploration. Uh, but mostly just keep pushing the envelope, keep innovating, keep challenging myself. I've also been working on a book about noise as interference on creative levels, so that's part of uh, going to be my work, a lot of writing and uh, thinking. And so it's sound, vision, cognition. What do you see for the future of art and technology? Lots of activity. There's going to be an enormous explosion between the activity between science, technology, and uh, art, all doing creative experimentation, using the tools of today, looking for new possibilities, new consciousness, and uh, really a lot of activity. I see it very bright. Of course, there'll be, in the context of the financial crisis, there'll be reactions against experiments in art and technology, but I think that is the way of the future, so it looks bright to me. Right, thank you for talking with us today, Joseph. My pleasure, David. Thank you for having me.